Airtable's latest update is changing the game for enterprise teams and anyone working with large data sets. With their new HyperDB feature, you can now access tens of millions of records from Airtable. Today, I'm going to show you everything you need to know about this new feature and how it works. Hi, I'm Tom from X-Ray Tech, the workflow company. At X-Ray, we use Airtable and other low-code tools to help businesses organize their data and automate their work. If you'd like to learn more about X-Ray and our services, check out our website at xray.tech. You can also reach out to us through Airtable's partner directory, where we're listed as a gold services partner. In this video, we're going to explore HyperDBs and what they mean for your company. We're also going to take a quick look at a few other features that Airtable introduced recently. Let's get started. Airtable has always imposed limits on how many records users can store in each base and table. The exact limits depend on each plan, and Airtable has consistently raised the record limits higher and higher over the last few years. But as of September 2024, which is when we're filming this video, Airtable's top-level enterprise plan has a limit of 500,000 records per base and 250,000 records per table. Up until now, creating an Airtable database that references millions of records has always required a complicated, unofficial workaround. For anyone working with large datasets, these limits have certainly been frustrating. As I noted in an earlier comparison video, one of the main reasons to use Google Sheets over Airtable is to work with large datasets, since Sheets supports over 10 million cells. However, the newly announced HyperDB feature is going to give you a much easier way to reference large datasets in Airtable. Here's how it works. Instead of storing all the records directly in an Airtable base, you can store all your records in a standalone database in software like Snowflake or Databricks. These databases don't have any of the same record limitations as an Airtable base. You can store tens of millions of records in them. Then, using HyperDB, you can sync these large datasets to your various Airtable bases. Essentially, HyperDB adds a new layer of data management on top of your bases. Each table and base will still have the same limitations as before, 250,000 records per table and 500,000 records per base on Enterprise. However, with HyperDB, you can choose to sync any subset of your large dataset to each table. And if you want to view different records in a table, you just have to choose different sync conditions. For instance, you might split records into different bases for each year or create different bases to sync different user groups. But no matter how you choose to divide up your HyperDB, the point is that these syncs aren't just going to be static uploads. If, for example, you want to change a base from showing records marked complete to records marked in progress, you can choose to do that at any time. So the HyperDB doesn't fully remove the record limit. You're not going to be able to use it to scroll through a million records in a single table. However, it makes it much easier to process a large data set for automations, analytics, and reporting inside of Airtable. And realistically, those are much more likely and practical use cases compared to someone pouring over a couple million records manually. HyperDB is only available on enterprise plans and is currently in beta. HyperDB is going to be a big deal for enterprise teams on Airtable, but it's not the only new feature coming to the app. In the same September update, they also added an app library, an app sandbox, and new options for organization branding. Let's take a quick look at each of these. With the app library and components, you'll be able to create consistent data structures that your teams can use for their own Airtable bases and apps. They'll sort of work like templates, but in this case, the template will actually maintain a dynamic connection with all of the bases created from it. So if you create an app library that your company can use to track OKRs, objectives and key results, each department can copy it to create their own OKR base. They can even customize it a bit to suit their own needs, but any updates that you make to the OKR app library will be reflected in each individual OKR base being used by each individual team. Plus, all of the data from every OKR base can be tracked and synced into a single report. With app libraries, it will be easier to keep your entire team on the same page and track their work while still giving them some degree of freedom to manage their own databases. Next, let's take a look at the sandbox. The app sandbox will give you a new way to test out changes to an Airtable base before you actually commit them to a live base that everyone's using. This is a very common principle in software development. Software engineers will always make changes to an internal code base so they can do some testing before actually publishing these changes to the app that users can access. Now, you can do the same thing in Airtable. You can test out that new formula or automation in the sandbox first. If everything works as intended, you can push it to production and let everyone access it. Or if you've accidentally broken the entire base with your changes, you can just keep them in the sandbox until they're ready to go. 
This is going to be a great feature that will make it much less stressful to experiment with new ideas on existing bases. It will also make it much easier for agencies and freelance builders to update an Airtable base for a client without disrupting their workflows. Finally, this new Airtable update has also introduced options for organization branding. The only custom branding we've had access to in the past is through custom logos in Airtable forms. Now, enterprise users will be able to customize their bases as well. For instance, you can upload your company logo and add it to the top corner of the base. It's certainly not a huge change, but it can be a nice way to make sure your clients and collaborators see your branding on the Airtable products you've built. This will be particularly useful if you're sharing your base externally. Instead of just seeing Airtable's branding, your collaborators or clients will see your company's brand as well, keeping your organization top of mind. App libraries and organization branding are available today for users on the enterprise plan. The App Sandbox is in beta, but anyone on the business or enterprise plan can sign up to try it out. With Airtable's latest round of updates, it will be easier than ever to manage large data sets. And beyond the exciting addition of HyperDBs, Airtable's also introducing several interesting features for organizing your team's bases, testing out ideas before publishing them, and customizing the style and branding of your apps. Let us know what you think in the comments below. Which new Airtable features are you most excited for? Will HyperDBs change the way you use Airtable or even get you to switch to Airtable from a different app? And are there any other Airtable topics you'd like to see us cover on the channel? Your suggestion could become one of our next videos. If you've enjoyed this video, prove you're human, like and subscribe for more automation tips every week. If you'd like to learn more about low-code automation and workflow design, follow us on LinkedIn, Twitter, or Facebook, and you can find all of our content on our website at xray.tech. You can find all those links in the X-Ray Workflow Resources Board down below. And as always, find your focus and stay in flow.